Howdy, howdy. Welcome back to another episode of Garage Noise, where we teach you how to build your skill and increase your knowledge about paint and body repair. And in today's episode, we're going to straighten this bedside. We've got a nasty crease down the center. We're going to repair that and get it ready for paint. I'm going to share with you how we do it. So let's get the camera inside this wheel opening and check it out. Taking a look at this wheel housing, we can see we've got a buckle right there. So the impact has pushed the bottom of that bedside in and buckled it. So what we need to do is get a port of power in there and push against the frame possibly and push that back out, straighten out that buckle before we start doing anything else. First, let's remove the tail light and that wheel opening molding. So this is a tool called a porta power. We're gonna be using this today to straighten out the lower part of that bedside. It's got a hydraulic hand pump and a ram, and we're gonna use it against the frame and push that lower bedside out and get it straight. Now I'm gonna take the porta power, I'm gonna put it against the frame and against the bottom of the bedside. We're gonna push the bottom of that bedside out and tap down that buckle that's inside that wheel opening. We'll get rid of that, get the Get the wheel opening back into the position it needs to be in. Then I'm going to work my way up the crease and we're going to tap down the high areas and push out the center of that crease as far up as we can. Now I've got this bedside pushed out as much as I can with the porta power. We're going to switch tactics. We're going to grind it down to bare metal, and then I'm going to use a long dent tool to push out that crease. Now I'm going to switch over to the G90E, and we're going to pull out some of these smaller dents, fine tune those, tap down any high areas, and then we're going to switch over to the big PDR bar and do some major pushing on that crease. So this is the big PDR bar I'm going to use inside the bedside. It's got some good leverage and we'll be able to push the center of that crease out and really flex this metal and get it back into shape where we need to be before we start using some filler. You can really see the flex in that bedside as I push out that crease. There's a big low area in that a crease section where the damage was and this metal was a lot stronger than anticipated so I really had to get some good leverage to push it out. I can really feel a big crown on the front part of this dent, so I'm going to mark it with my Sharpie so I know where to tap that down as I'm pushing. Now I'm going to finish up with the PDR bar and then we'll switch over to the G90E and fine tune any little low areas, get those straightened out, and then we'll get ready to apply some filler. All 
I'll apply a little guide coat here to help me locate any low areas. Now I'm going to go over with the metal file to expose any high areas. Now we're ready for some filler and the filler we're going to use today is the Roberlo Maxi Fill. I've got a good amount here. We're going to mix it up by folding it in so we keep that air out of our filler. Then what we'll do is we'll fill all the low areas first. So I'll go over that crease area, get a good coat on that low area. And then there's some other low areas around this panel we'll fill. And then we'll put a coat over all the bare metal areas. Now I've ground this down with 36 grit roll lock disc to promote adhesion of the filler. There's no way around it. This is a lot of sanding on this filler. So for that, I'm using 36 grit on my mud hog. This is an orbital style sander that's really going to shred this body filler and get it flat. So what we're trying to do now is after it's cured, we're just going to flatten this out. We're going to have to put another coat of filler on, but we want to just start leveling it out, get all the roughness taken out of this and start shaping this body filler. So I'm going to kind of go in an X pattern up and down, following the contours of the panel and get this sanded smooth. Now that I've got it all shaped, I'm going to switch over to the long board with some 36 grit on it, and that's going to help shape it even more. I put a little bit of a guide coat on there to show me expose any higher low areas, and we're going to start blocking this out and prepare for our next coat of filler. Now I'm going to put the next coat of filler on and once again I'm going to go around and fill all the low areas first and then we'll put a coat pretty much over this entire repair. Once the filler has cured, I'm going to use my long block with some 36 grit sandpaper. We're going to block all the flat areas of this repair and get those straight. We're going to block it in an X pattern. That's how you're going to get this panel straight. Now, I'm not blocking any of those contours. We're going to do that later on. Now, I've added a little bit of guide coat to help me locate any low areas in this repair. You'll see me use some different style blocks. I'll use an orbital sander. Um, I'll use some hand blocks, some different blocks for different sections of this repair. That's just a personal preference of what you use. Now, down in the contours of the bottom of this door, I'm going to have to use a round block to get that contour around that body line straight. Here's one of the blocks I'll be using, and this is a really good block. It's made by MotorGuard. It's a straight block, but it's flexible. It is the hook and loop, but where that contour is, that kind of that wheel open kind of flares out. So you have to be flat against that. So you need a flexible block that you can block the flat part and the contour at the same time. And this block works really well. If you are interested in any of the tools or products I use, you can check out my links down in the description. So I'm no longer using the 36 grit. I'm using 80 grit to block over this. Now we've got it pretty much straight. There's a few little waves, but we want to start removing those 36 grit scratches. Now I'm going to apply the final coat of filler. And for that, I'm using a product called icing. It's a polyester glazing putty, and this is going to be real good. It's very thin, very easy to sand. It's going to remove any waves or low areas allow me to block those out 
It's also going to fill any deep scratches that I might have missed when I was blocking it out with the 80. Just to knock off the outer coat of this glaze, I'm going to hit it with some 80 grit on my long board, and then we'll probably go over it with 180 or 220. Now I've got a few little low areas I need to fill, so we're going to use a little bit more icing and fill those areas. Before I start blocking this, I'm going to run over it with my 180 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander, but I went over it a little bit too early. It wasn't quite cured and see how it's gumming up the paper a little bit. So I did knock off the outer coating and then we started blocking it with some 180 grit. So I finish up the sanding with some 320 grit on the long block before we start masking this off for some primer. The primer we're going to use today is the Roberlo ME1. We do have some areas that we went through to bare metal, so we need to use a direct to metal primer. And this Roberlo ME1 is really good primer. So we're going to mix up some of this with the hardener and we'll be ready to spray some primer. Now you can reduce this primer, but I opted to use it at full strength because I do have some blocking that needs to be done. We have a large area of body filler, so we need to have good thick material on there to block it straight. Okay, now we have this ready for primer. Let's take a good look at it. Nice and straight. It's got a couple bare metal spots showing through, but we're using a direct to metal primer. So let's tape this off and get it primed. So I'm using the 3M Performance Gun to apply this primer, and I'm just using a 1.4 tip. Seems to work out fine. I could go with a larger tip, but the 1.4 seems to work well. So we're just going to put one good coat of primer on this. Fill any low areas. If I see any, if I know where there's some low areas, I'll put a little extra primer there on the first coat. Then we'll let it flash off really good before we apply our second coat. Okay, so if you look at this primer in the light, you can start to see how it's flashing off, it's starting to dry. We wanna make sure it dries really well before we put our second coat on. I'm gonna put my infrared light on it and let it cure up a little bit. And now we're gonna apply our second coat of primer. And from there, we just need to let it cure. And if you can let it sit for a couple days before you sand it, that's good because it allows that primer to shrink. If it's gonna shrink at all, it allows it to shrink and cure properly and you won't have any issues when you put your base coat on and your clear coat. So all we need to do is block this out and paint it. And we're going to do that in the next episode. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you don't miss anything. I want to let you know I appreciate all the support from you guys. Appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. If you want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.